Is there a window hidden from view that I can smash if I have to? Ex-burglars, what things make people a target? I'm not a burglar, but I worked for the largest security company in this country for half a decade. Burglar alarms do not deter burglars. They just alert you that you have been burglarized. Most of the time the police will take very little action in response due to the fact that 98% of burglar alarm activation constitute false alarms. The sign that comes with the alarm though? That thing is worth more than the alarm as far as deterring burglars. My job was to take reports from customers who had been burglarized. In all my time doing these interviews and I never interviewed one single burglary victim who owned a medium-sized or large-sized dog. Not one single time. That is not to say that no one who owns a dog ever gets burglarized. I'm just saying that in 5 years of spending 8 hours a day interviewing people who had been, not one single time did I encounter the situation. I think there is at least some statistical validity in that. I stuck with commercial burglary. Residential burglary carried a risk of getting hit with a home invasion charge which increases your sentence if convicted, not to mention, you run the risk of getting shot by some redneck with a spring-loaded magnum under every flat surface in the house. Anyway, I'd pick places based on the upkeep of their equipment. If the cash register was out of date, so was their camera system. If the clerk leaves the register open a crack while they're behind the counter, that means the safe is likely open in the back room. It also helps to hit the places that hire felons, fast food joints, video stores, etc. Because the cops are gonna waste a lot of time looking into the staff members who have a criminal history. The closer they're looking at them, the better off I am. A recent study showed that burglars come back to the same houses quite often. They do this because of a number of motives. 1. They want to take things they, for some reason, couldn't take the first time. 2. They're kind of familiar with the house. 3. It's guaranteed that the people they robbed replace the stuff they stole the first time, often these replacements are of better quality than the original. So after you get raided take good security measures. Before I bought my house, I lived in a pretty shitty neighborhood. We would hear gunshots on any given evening. One day, one of our neighbors who we had talked to many times before came up to me while I was mowing the lawn and asked if I'd seen anything. Apparently hers and several other houses in the neighborhood were broken into and robbed that previous night while she was at work. They pushed the air conditioning unit through the wall, crawled in and proceeded to take everything that wasn't nailed down. A few weeks later, another neighbor reported the same thing. Eventually, everyone in our neighborhood except us had been robbed. Our big difference was a few signs on our fence that said beware of dog. The dog in question was my wife's dachshund, but we occasionally had my friend's mastiff visit us. Dogs seemed to be a decent deterrent according to the cops that came around asking questions. There was a guy hanging around my apartment complex for at least 5 hours claiming to have been waiting for someone. At night my husband went out to walk our dog and I was in the bathroom. He realized he didn't lock the door and remembered that guy, turned back after only a minute and found the guy in the process of opening our door. My husband is 6 feet 4 inches and my dog is a 65 pound bull terrier. My husband started yelling, but what I saw scare the hell out of him the most was my dog trying to take him down. Never saw that guy again. Motion sensing floodlights outside. No big bushes in front of windows where someone could hide. Thorn bushes are always good for under windows, if you keep them close enough. A dog is nice. If you can't afford an alarm and security cameras, fake cameras and alarm contacts on windows can be a deterrent, hopefully. Better to just get the real thing. Remember any security footage could possibly be obtained and used against you if something goes down. If you do shady things, cameras could be a bad idea. Deadbolt locks on all exterior doors. Keyed outside and inside if there's windows in or next to the door. But then only take the key out when nobody is home, for fire safety. If you aren't always home at night, get a few timers for lamps inside. Pro level. Get a cheap TV. Like a CRT 13 inch that nobody wants. Put it in a cabinet or wall unit type thing, so you can close the door to hide it when guests come over. Put it on a timer to stay on until very late, and set a light timer in a bedroom to come on when it goes off. Install vertical blinds on a window across from the TV. Vertical blinds are great, because you can angle them for a very limited view, so the house looks less closed up and more inhabited. Anyway, in this case, angle the blinds so you can clearly see the bad TV, but nothing else in the room. Set volume so you can just barely hear it outside. This does two things, the light and sound make it seem like someone could be home. And, a thief may look in, see the old 13-incher and just be like, 
Well this dude's stuff sucks, I'm going somewhere else. This guy I went to high school with did an interview where he talked about his former addiction and how he used to rob people. It's creepy as all hell. He said that he used to just try to find an unlocked entrance and then take only some of the money, jewelry and valuables he'd find because then people would most likely think they merely misplaced or miscounted whatever was missing and he could hit the same house multiple times. So, yeah, always lock your doors and windows. Even if you live in a small town or are just popping out for a minute to go to the store. I would check out a house several times over two days. If there was no sign of movement, no lights coming on or off, no curtains moved, newspapers left on the driveway, I was interested. Is the house in a nice neighborhood? Is it well kept? If so I figured they had nice stuff. Next question, is there an easy escape route? Woods in the backyard were excellent. Next question, is there a window hidden from view that I can smash if I have to? Listen to a KFI radio interview when I lived in Los Angeles. Former anonymous burglar said he avoided houses that hung the US flag. Said it told him the occupants likely owned at least one firearm. Would avoid even if it looked as though no one was home. Not a burglar, but a guy who is paranoid about keeping his stuff from being stolen. Buy a $3 blinking LED, from eBay, and install it on top of your car's dash. Especially a blue one as that screams fancy aftermarket alarm. Keeps the neighborhood 3am car hoppers away. Car hopping is basically what little butthole kids do. They walk around neighborhoods and apartment complex parking lots trying car door handles to see if any are unlocked so they can steal anything they can inside. Some are not above breaking into a locked vehicle if they spy a purse, backpack or something else theft worthy within sight. I've read that 3am is the optimal time to hit an apartment complex parking lot. Not a burglar, but I have some info to share. I used to live alone in a small bungalow in central Phoenix. My house was broken into twice while I was home and in the afternoon even. Both times, my dog alerted me by her low, guttural growl and then some loud, violent barks. I'd never heard anything like that out of a dog. She knew the difference between a visitor getting ready to knock, and someone working on the door itself. Thank goodness for that fearless little Bichon. I once owned a house that had been built in 1950 by a civil engineer who ended up with a debilitating condition which eventually created a situation requiring a wheelchair and then eventually he was bedridden. He decided he needed to make sure he knew when someone was in the house. So he had a system installed which consisted of a bunch of small areas with wires beneath the carpet. There was a toggle switch on the wall near each area which they would switch on every night, and if walked on, a loud buzz would sound throughout the house. We couldn't figure out what the toggles were for, but didn't worry too much about it. But when we pulled up the carpet and found the wires, my spouse started doing research and figured it out. I only broke into a house once. It was my ex-girlfriend's place. She announced on Facebook she was out of the country for the weekend with her new lover, and I was still pissed she cheated on me a couple of weeks with that person earlier, so I decided to break some of her stuff. I had a duplicate key to her front door. And I know it sounds creepy as hell looking back at it, but I had it made the day she mentioned she wanted the key back, so I got in there pretty easily. Once inside, I poured water into every single electronic device, laptop, TV, PlayStation, etc. I also fed the cat, and gave the poor bastard a bowl of water, since she forgot to do so. Then I left. Not a burglar, but when I drive to work in the evening when it is dark. I can't tell you how many big screen TVs I can see through large unshaded windows in people's homes. They are just advertising. I keep all my windows shaded. Also, I don't have any big screen TVs. I prefer smaller TVs that are closer to me, within a few feet instead of a giant TV that is across the room. I just bought an Amazon Alexa and some smart home lights. The Alexa is connected with these lights for comfort reasons. However, the actual feature is that I can set schedules for the lights and for music. I can also control them from anywhere in the world via smartphone app. When I go on holiday, I create schedules for lights and audio. I basically pretend I am at home. I have several Echo Dots, which are smaller Alexa speakers in my home, so each room has sound if I want. And the best thing, Amazon works on new features for the Alexa, like a burglary detector. It simply recognizes sounds that sound like glass breaking or whispering at night. This will likely only be released in the US and not in Europe, but still a great feature. A couple of Alexa speakers and some smart bulbs cost less than $300. Much cheaper than an expensive alarm system.
Find the links for them in the video description. These links are affiliate links, that means I get a small commission if you buy anything on Amazon after clicking them. Anyway, thanks for listening to Radio TTS. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell for more videos that make you paranoid. Share your own tips in the comments below, and let us know if you have ever been the victim of a burglary.